When we network, we always think about what kind of fun, positive energy are we bringing into a meetup or situation. It's not about trying to sell something. It's not about trying to push yourself into a network. It's about meeting people, listening carefully with both your ears, and then responding. And when we approach networking this way, people will always, always, always respond positively to us because they feel that we're not there for an agenda. We're not there to try to make a sale. That's not why we go. We go network because we genuinely want to hear people's stories. Figuring out who we can help, that comes later, after you get to know people. One of the great mistakes we see so many early stage companies make is just spamming the heck out of people on LinkedIn with all kinds of pre-written messages. Everybody knows, everybody can recognize at that point if a message has been copied and pasted, if it's been generated by AI, it's obvious that you didn't write it person to person. So Mess, what are some of your favorite ways to make contacts with people? Well, so the one on LinkedIn, actually, we have a video on that. Click the card up in the corner to go watch it. There is, I find it, there is one way to do it on LinkedIn that you kind of take a bit of both worlds. And that's the way I talk about in the video I mentioned, which is basically you find like a Gary V, a Mark Cuban, some, some famous person that has a big LinkedIn following that you actually generally like. And then you go into the comments of that person section, uh, their, that person's comment section to find new connections. And you just go and click people's profile see who you want to connect with. Then you send them a quick message like, I saw your comment on Gary V's post. It ran, it really spoke to me. I've been a fan of Gary for a long time. I learned good people attract to each other. That's something along the lines of what I do. And that you can basically just copy paste and it, it works wonders. I have too much to do on LinkedIn at the moment actually. But Generally, it's about, as Mike talked about, it's about building connections. It's not about getting that sale because people can feel that. You can feel that. Just think about your LinkedIn inbox and the people you like talking to that reach out and the people you don't. People you don't generally try to sell you something off the bat that's not relevant. No action. And a few. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Well, a few tips for an in person meetup. Obviously, you know that you need to dress decently. Figure out what most people there, you know, is it going to be business casual? Is it formal? Is it, you know, very informal? What is it going to be? Try to address one notch above that. When you greet people, greet them with a smile in your eye. Make good eye contact and be happy inside. When you're happy inside, your eyes are smiling. People feel that energy. Shake hands and watch what you say. It's never about trying to present yourself or trying to be the big shot or make a big entrance. It's about making the other person open up and you get the other person to open up by being genuinely friendly and genuinely welcoming. How do you do this? Sometimes as a startup founder, early stage business person, you're a little bit not quite sure how to do this because you're so into your own thing. And one of the best ways is to ask a question not related to business. Something like, hey, there was this cool event here last week. Did you go to it? It has to be genuine. It has to be something real. And it has to be something that's safe that you could ask anybody. So keep it G-rated. Moss, what are some of your um, more practical tips for doing an in-person meetup and talking to new people? Well, as you mentioned, dress nice, and if in doubt, business casual always works. Always. You, you, I just generally, when I'm in doubt, I, I go business casual because you don't want to stand out too much. But find ways to be interesting to other people, and people like to talk about themselves. So ask them questions that you're generally like interested in. And also... Realize when a person is like a lost cause, and I don't say this in like a bad way, but some people you don't just click with, and that's how it is. So stop trying to speak to each other if it ain't really working. Say you gotta go to the toilet, and then <laughs> find somebody else to speak to. 
they generally do it. Generally do it because you're wasting both of you guys' time. But find the people you're actually generally liking to talk to because you don't want to end up having a client that's hard to interact with. It's, it's not going to be pretty. And another thing, especially for the men out here, make sure you smell nice. Like when you get into certain people's cars, the smell in there, it just smells like money. Like for me, that's definitely a big thing I've done. A very big part of it. I have for me that's a very big thing and something I've taken very seriously ever since I was like 19 because I got told that I smell at work and after that I just made sure to always smell nice because you don't want to be around a person that doesn't smell nice so I think that's definitely the most important things when in person just go in and before you go into any room or stuff like that actually have a look at yourself in the mirror make sure you look presentable because the worst thing that can happen is these intrusive thoughts come into your head and then all of a sudden do i have something in my teeth or do i have a spot on my cheek something like that and it's like no that's not a good thing because all of a sudden you're distracted and you're not listening because listening is really the most important thing and this is just like the basics to actually making sure that you can keep the conversation going my basics at least maybe you could take us up to that advanced level mike <laughs> well thanks <Matt. laughs> well you know that we want we want to end on this bonus tip for everybody there's nothing more powerful in a conversation when you feel the energy changing when something is shifting and it's not a good shift there's nothing more powerful than just stopping Looking the person straight in the eye and asking the question, hey, I just felt the energy in this conversation shift. What's going on? Now, that that could create a little bit of discomfort, but that's okay because something changed on their side. You're asking what it is. An intelligent, rational, logical business person, the kind of business person that you want to do business with, is going to answer you somehow. And they may not be able to explain it, but they're able to tell you that something changed from their side. Uh, but if you don't ask that, You've missed an opportunity. So don't miss your opportunities. Get out there and network. And of course, you can always practice on us if you need, feel the need to practice with some guys that are totally safe. Um, if you want to uh, do that, just send us a message totally on LinkedIn. Safe. We'll see how that goes. Not any promises. I'm not making any guarantees, Mike. Well, one of us is. <laughs> All right. Thank you for listening.